Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 74. In past episodes, I've done a lot about how you photograph shooting bullets. And uh, you generally used these small projectiles. Uh, these are standard pellets that go in an air pellet rifle that I bought from the store. And they work pretty good. Uh, it's a nice, easy solution. But uh, before I started making these videos, I made an air cannon at my home that shoots much larger projectiles, these uh, half-inch ball bearings. And uh, I thought I'd dig it out and sort of talk a little bit about the differences between sort of these little pellets and the big pellets uh, when you're photographing uh, projectiles with uh, the camera axe. So one of the things that's uh, notable and one, one of the big differences is that uh, it's really hard to get these projectiles going as fast. I, I tend to shoot these at about 250 feet per second. I know people have shot projectiles much faster than that. I'm thinking about doing a new air cannon in the future that um, will increase my uh, uh, velocity on these ball bearings. But I'm not really getting into the actual air cannon. There's tons of resources about that online. Uh, so, you know, go and you know, just search for how to build an air cannon if you're interested in doing one of those. Be safe, of course. Uh, but uh, when you're photographing these guys, they really distribute their energy a lot more equally through, uh, <clears throat> through an item. And that sort of creates this pretty different uh, photographic opportunities um, from these really little pellets. Uh, and I thought that because these were so much more massive, they'd have a ton more uh, kinetic energy. But, as I'm about to show you, that didn't turn out to be quite as big a difference in kinetic energy as I thought. One fun thing with the camera axe and this high-speed photography is that I'm always going back to sort of high school level physics and trying to figure out, you know, the duration of uh, an event or the velocity of a bullet and then figure out how fast I need to react with a flash or a camera. So that, that's kind of fun um, stuff. In this time, this time we're going to use a slightly different equation that I've used with the camera axe before. I'm going to be figuring out the kinetic energy uh, of this ball bearing versus the uh, little pellet here and see if there, uh, it's a big difference. So uh, the equation to figure out kinetic energy, in case you forgot it from high school, is uh, one half times the mass times your velocity squared. So we know the velocity because the camera axe records that, and we know the mass because I can weigh these uh, bullets. So we should be able to pretty easily figure out the kinetic energy. So for the ball bearing, I measured uh, the velocity as... Uh, 76 meters per second and uh, the velocity of the pellet here was 286 uh, meters per second. Now um, the other piece of equa information I needed was the mass. So the uh, mass for the ball bearing was 8 point three nine grams and the mass for this little pellet here which is obviously much smaller is 0.47 grams so just sort of looking at these numbers um, this is much smaller the the mass here is much smaller than the mass here and uh, the velocity here is quite a bit less than here um, since the velocity is getting squared in the equation, this is going to have a bigger impact. However, uh, the mass difference is off by a uh, order of magnitude. So, you know, just looking at these numbers, it's probably going to end up being approximately the same amount of energy. So, uh, when you do the equations, I'll do the one for the uh, ball bearing first. We've got energy equals one half times point or it's times 8.39 grams times 76 meters per second 
and then you square this guy and I get uh, about 19,200 joules. I'll just use three significant digits there. Uh, and the energy for the air pellet is going to be one half times a much smaller mass of 0 0.47 grams. And uh, we'll multiply that by 286 meters per second. We'll square him. And I did the calculations for this, and it turns out to be, whoops. <laughs> okay, uh, so I had the calculations all written down here, but uh, so I mis I misplaced that. So uh, basically, this one, if you do the do this on your calculator, you'll get um, twenty four thousand two hundred for the ball bearing. Sorry about that. And uh, for the uh, pellet, you'll get this nineteen thousand two hundred. Both of those are jewels. So we're talking about 24 uh, kilojoules and 19 kilojoules for this one. So there is more energy in this ball bearing, uh, but it's not a big, a, a, a lot. It's, let's see, 5, uh, 20, 20, 20, maybe 25 percent more energy uh, in the ball bearing. So... Uh, not a huge difference, but what really does make a big difference, I think, is that this uh, bigger area means that more of the energy from this pellet will generally be absorbed by the target. So that makes the explosion bigger and sort of more uh, energetic, just because more energy is transferred from this guy into uh, the target. Now, obviously, it m makes a difference what you're shooting, how big the thing you're shooting is, but... It's definitely, you know, if you're doing a lot of projectile uh, photography, uh, it's definitely worth trying, you know, different uh, projectiles and different types of uh, things to shoot them. So this is the setup I'm using with the air cannon I made to photograph flying ball bearings, sort of destroying different kinds of targets. I made this out of metal many years ago uh, just to be extra safe probably a wise precaution but i have seen a lot of people online uh, use various types of plastic tube and you just need to make sure that you're working uh, with a you know reasonable safety factor there uh, back here is just a sort of a nozzle that you can attack a bike pump or i use an air compressor i have to to fill this to about 80 psi and uh, this is just a manual valve to release the air in this chamber into the nozzle here. I'm using the same clamping system. And there's the projectile sensor to detect when the uh, ball bearing is, is exiting the barrel. And then basically the way this projectile sensor works is uh, the bearing goes past here and has a trigger and then it goes past here and does a trigger. Figures out how fast the ball bearing is going and from that uh, velocity, it can uh, then compute how much time to wait before triggering the flash, and uh, the uh, all of the intelligence is handled with the camera axe here. So you just enter in a distance from uh, right here that you want the bullet to be when uh, the flashes are activated. So it's really simple to set up, and uh, there's a pair of the air gap flashes I've made. And I've done videos about those. Here's the setup I'm using uh, with the targets. And this plastic thing is just to kind of contain some of the mess. But definitely doesn't contain it all. Which is why I've kind of got this cake back here that uh, catches the rest of it. And uh, over here, I've talked about this before, but that's just to sort of capture the bullets. Um, or ball bearings in this case. So uh, on the camera, let's see what settings I'm using right now. I've got ooh, 
The ISO set to 800, the duration of the shutter is one second, and the f-stop is 16. So those are the settings I've been using today to take uh, most of the following settings. I think I did adjust the ISO and the f-stop once or twice uh, going through the photos, but uh, now I'll show you some of the photos I've taken today, and uh, thanks for watching.